You got to know the data and let's not make it mean something it shouldn't. Whether you're behind your goal or not doesn't determine your worth. It doesn't mean you're meant to be an entrepreneur or not. It's just data points so that from there we can make new decisions. I'm Amy Porterfield, ex-corporate girl turned CEO of a multi seven-figure business. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on growing my small but mighty business. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, and you'll see the business I have today, one that changes lives and gives me more freedom than I ever thought possible. One that used to only exist as a daydream. I created the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step strategies to help you do the same. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life you love, you're in the right place, friend. Let's get started. Hey there, friend. Welcome back to Online Marketing Made Easy. Can you believe that we are more than halfway through the year? I don't know about you, but that kind of freaks me out. Time is flying by. I think the older I get, the faster time goes by. I don't know what that's about, but have you ever experienced that? Please tell me I am not alone. Now, right about now, if you're anything like me, you're starting to feel the Sunday scaries around meeting your annual goals, especially if you know that you are pacing behind. Now, I have to stop. For most of you, you understand Sunday scaries, but some people don't because the other day I had the Sunday scaries on a Sunday before everything started on Monday. I had a really busy week. I struggle with anxiety. So the anxiety started piling up around 6 p.m. on Sunday. So I looked at my sweet husband and I said, oh, I have the Sunday scaries. And he looked at me like I had two heads. He's like, you have what? He had never heard that term before. So just in case you haven't heard the term Sunday scaries before, essentially it's that anxiety that something's coming very soon and you are not really sure if you're ready for it or if you feel totally equipped to tackle what's ever ahead. So Sunday scaries make perfect sense if you're a little scared about the fact that we're halfway through the year and you might even be pacing behind your goals. So right now is when things start to feel real because there's only a few months left to catch up. And if you are off track, which I think many people right now are, if you are off track, then you're probably feeling a certain way. And that's what this episode is about. How to do a quick reset in your business and finish out the year strong. Now, I'm going to give you three tried and true ways to get a little boost of cash in your business. So hopefully that just piqued your interest. But before I do, quick question. Have you ever shared this episode with a friend? If not, could you do me a favor and just send the link to either this episode or just the podcast to a friend or two and just tell them that this could give you a little extra support on their entrepreneurial journey? My mission is to use my podcast to help as many entrepreneurs as possible build the business that they absolutely love. So if you could share it, I'd be forever grateful. Okay, before we get into how we can make some extra cash, there's something you should do right now. And that is to take, let's say a few hours, at most a half a day, just stay with me here, take a half a day and look at your numbers. Like bust out those spreadsheets, grab the P&L, grab any numbers that you can grab and compare your numbers with your goals in terms of where you are right now. Where are you in revenue? Are you on track? Are you ahead? Are you behind? How about profit? Do you ever check your profit? Like, where am I with my profit? And then also your email list. Are you pacing with the goals you set for your email list? So I think some of the best numbers to check right now, your revenue and profit for sure, and then dissect it. Like if you are off track, where are you off track? What is it that set you behind? If you're on track or ahead, let's identify that because you might want to do a little bit more of that this year just to make sure you stay pacing ahead. So really understanding if you got behind where you got behind, and if not, if you're right where you need to be, awesome. That's going to feel really good. And then of course, your email list. And if you have a podcast, I love to check my podcast. I like to compare it to where I was last year at this time. So 
diving into the numbers. And I want to say before I move on, I'm not a big numbers girl. Numbers do not come naturally to me. Any kind of numbers, I feel as though they are in a different language. It's actually embarrassing to me that I don't even want to say this. I'm going to say it for the podcast, but then I'm going to say cancel because I don't want this to be my reality. But I just don't feel competent with numbers. I don't feel like I am smart in that area. However, cancel, 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 because that's not going to serve me and I can hold my own. I'm going to change that to say I can figure anything out. I can hold my own. And the more I review my PL, the more I dig in to find the numbers that I need, the more I compare them to last year, I start to understand them more. I've been doing this for a while. So I feel like I, I understand my numbers now, but it was a real big challenge for a long time. And sometimes I'll be in a financial meeting with my CFO and my CEO. And my CEO is really good with numbers. And she, I feel a little like I have imposter syndrome sometimes. She paces like that with numbers. I don't, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to get in the game. That doesn't mean I'm going to cover my eyes and be like, no, 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 I, I, I can't look or I can't listen to this. I have to, it is my business. So even if it feels awkward, I'm showing up. And I want to encourage you to do the same and get some help if you need to get the bookkeeper. If you don't have one, get a financial literacy program to really understand. I'm going to give a shout out to my girl, Jamie Troll. She's really good with helping business owners understand their numbers and the most important part of their numbers. So check out Jamie Troll. I'll put her in my show notes, but I feel like she's got a lot of great programs to help you feel more confident in this area. Okay. So that's my little Ted talk on that issue but we're moving on. There are some of you listening that you didn't set goals for the year and that's okay. Maybe you were just afraid to set goals. Sometimes goal setting creates anxiety for people and maybe you're really new in your business. So you're like, I'm not even sure what goals to set. Let's do that now. Now is the best time to set your goals if you haven't done so already. It's okay if we're halfway through the year, better now than never. The good news is I actually have a really great free training for you on my podcast that it's called how to plan out your promo calendar and revenue for the year. And you can do this at this time, anytime you can use this. Actually, the episode, I sold this training and then I put it later on for free on my podcast, like years later. So it's episode 676. So amyporterfield.com forward slash 676. If you want help planning the rest of the year, I got you covered. So no excuses. I got you covered. So If you've done your check-in and you found yourself short of your goals or when you do your check-in, just stay with me here. If you're like, ooh, I'm a little behind or you've just set your goals for the second half of the year and you wanna hit the ground running, the next thing you need to do is create a plan of action to make some cash and close the gap. So to do that, you've gotta look for opportunities with low lift. When I say low lift, this is like low hanging fruit. They're the things you can do that don't require a ton of output. They don't require you to hire someone new on your team. They don't require you to spend a whole bunch of money to make work. We're going simple. Let it be easy. But we need to look for these opportunities to close the gap. So for example, one thing you could do is create a special offer to help make up some of the ground. Maybe it's for one-on-one consulting or group coaching or a service that you can offer. So for example, let's say that you are a leadership coach for people in corporate America and you wanted to put together a plan, maybe do one-on-one consulting for like a six-week period. That could be your temporary offer. It's not something that you have to go all in on for long-term, but it's an offer that you know you could do easily Or maybe you put together a small group coaching program around new managers in corporate. And it's something like a four week group coaching program. So it's a easy lift for you. It doesn't have to be super expensive for them. These are the things I want you to think about. And this allows you to leverage your skills into a service or some kind of offer. Just be selective about who you work with Set clear boundaries around the scope of your work so that if you want this just to be temporary, people are very aware of what you're offering, how long it lasts, and of course, what they're going to get from it. Now, whatever your offer may be, I'm thinking you do a 
email promo series, like three or four emails over maybe a one or two week period. And then of course you can use social media. So here's how it might look. Let's say it's a $200 offer and you get 20 people to sign up. Let's say you're doing a four week group coaching program. It's $200 a person, 20 people sign up. That means you're $4,000 closer to meeting your goal if you're behind. And guess what? These things start to add up because you could do more than that, but that's just one idea. Now, another thing to consider is doing a workshop course. If you're not familiar with a workshop course, it's a one or two hour live training. And so you deliver it live, but then it's recorded. So then you can also offer it after the live experience as like an evergreen offer. Now it's, like a webinar, but with a twist, you're not selling on the training. And the reason I call it a workshop is you're going to choose one area of your expertise. So let's go back to our leadership coach. Maybe it's how to have difficult conversations with your employees. Okay, so that's what the workshop is, you take one very specific topic. So how to have difficult conversations with your employees. And let's say it's an hour long training, and you're offer, also going to offer a workbook with it, and you'll give them the recording. So that's really valuable. And if you choose a topic that you know they really want, it's really easy to sell. The price point is typically low. So we're talking like $100, probably no more than $200. I like the $100 price point for something like this. And so basically, you promote it to your email list, to social. You could heavily use social for something like this. It's a no brainer price. So you take them to a very simple order form. We're not talking about a long sales page. You take them to an order form, tell them when the live is, let them know they get the recording, talk about the value of the, the workbook that goes along with it. Let them know you'll do a Q&A at the end. So there's a live component, a live engaging component to it. And so you do the hour long training. I'd add on like a 15, 20 minute Q&A at the end and you're done. So you sell it for a week or two, you deliver it live, now you have the recording, and now you can sell it on Evergreen. If you want to do it yourself, you absolutely can, but I have to tell you a little secret. I recently re-recorded Digital Course Academy. So if you've never purchased Digital Course Academy from me, or if you're an alumni, pay attention because you know my alumni, they get all of my updates all the time, like for a lifetime. So I just did a massive update to DCA. And I did two tracks. And for my total beginners or my students who just want a quick cash injection to add to their business, I teach every detail of a workshop course. What I just explained to you, but in way more detail, I give you all the templates, all the emails, everything you need to pull this off like really quickly. And then I have a course track two, which is all about how to create a digital course fully and how to launch it and all that. That's my typical course, but I added a new track for my total newbies. And whoever gets Digital Course Academy in the future, you get both tracks. So you can use both of them, which is really cool. And my alumni will get these updates. So anyway, if you want to wait to do your workshop course and learn step-by-step-by-step and use all my templates, that comes out in September. But if you're like, I can't wait, Amy, I actually like this idea, I'll figure it out on my own go on with your bad self. It's another way to close the gap, make like a quick cash injection now. Okay, moving on. Another idea to close out the year strong is to become an affiliate and promote somebody else's program or product or service or tool like a software tool. So think about the brands and companies that you partner with already, like you use. Like I use Tonic, I use Show It, I use Searchy, I use Kajabi. Like these are tools, ConvertKit. I use them over and over again. You can bet that I'm an affiliate for all of them. And so this is something that I think we all should be doing if we're using tools and our audience would likely use those same tools, go for it. Now, when it doesn't make sense is if you don't teach business and let's say you use Slack. So Slack is a communication software, right? And so you teach, I love the dog trainer example. So you're a dog trainer. You literally work with dogs all day. Promoting Slack to your audience will make zero sense. Promoting your favorite leash to your audience makes a lot of sense. Just because you use the tool doesn't mean your audience is going to want to use it, right? So make sure you affiliate with tools that your audience will find really valuable. 
And real quick, I've had the opportunity to work with one of my students, Tamari Jacob, and she has a business called One with the Pump, where she teaches women how to breast pump when they're new moms. Now, with that, though, she also has just created a community around women who want to know more about her life. They also want to know where she buys her clothes. They want to know what makeup she uses. They want to know what is her favorite vacuum that she uses all the time in some of her videos. Like they want to know it all. So she's become an affiliate for so many different things, which I look more as like a lifestyle brand or an influencer in some ways, which I think is really cool. So you have to use your best judgment. Like that wouldn't make sense for me because I don't share a lot of my personal life. I share a little, but I like to stick to, I teach online marketing, here's what you need to know. That's just my style. But if I shared more about my personal life, I probably would share more of the different things that I use on a day-to-day basis. So whatever works for you, but I'm all about affiliate revenue. It definitely is a line item that I pay attention to in my business. So find the opportunities to promote tools, resources, anything that you really love that makes sense for your audience and get the affiliate link and get it out there. Now, if you have a digital course and you want to get affiliates to sell your course, that's an option as well. Or if you want to be an affiliate for somebody else's digital course, That's an option. I actually did an episode called Affiliate Marketing 101, what I've done to earn 300K per quarter in affiliate revenue. And that's episode 568. So if I'm piquing your interest right now and you're like, wait a second, this affiliate thing, that feels like a low lift, which it is, my friend. It is a low lift. Then I want you to check out that episode. amyporterfield.com forward slash 568. Okay, are you still with me? I hope so, because you now have three low lift opportunities that can help you finish the year strong. Okay, so I just went over three really solid strategies that you, my friend, can absolutely figure out and implement to close the gap. But there's another like big part of this that's beyond just strategies, and it's more of methodology. And it's all about staying organized and focused with your eye on the prize to hit those goals. So let me back you up a little bit. You likely know that my business coach is Michael Hyatt. And Michael Hyatt and his team, they created something called the Full Focus Planner. His Full Focus Planner has been a godsend because I don't know if you knew this, but it uses a science-based goal achievement system and it connects your daily tasks directly to your long-term goals. Your daily tasks, the stuff that you're like, I got to get this done to your long-term goals. So if you've ever said, I don't know what I should be focusing on right now, get the full focus planner. It will help you get focused on the right things. Now, here's something cool I haven't talked about on the show yet, but his team just recently released a brand new program. It's called Life Focus. And it helps you set a vision for your life, create a plan, and turn your vision into a reality. And Hobie and I did this together. So if you do have a partner, this would be a cool thing to do together. But again, it's called Life Focus. And it's actually a program. It's designed to help you not just see the big picture, but to actually break it down into steps that you can take every single day to achieve greater success and fulfillment. And that, my friend, is what it's all about. So if you're interested, I want you to go to amyporterfield.com forward slash life focus. And then let me know what you think. I'll put it in the show notes, but amyporterfield.com forward slash life focus. Remember, I'm just at Amy Porterfield on Instagram. So if you do the program, I want to hear what you thought about it as well, because it's brand new and I thought it was really incredible. All right. So anyway, I hope you found this shorty episode valuable. My shorty episodes are getting longer than I want because I have so much I want to share with you, but I thought this episode was important. We're at halfway through the year at the time of this recording. I don't care when you listen to it. I think this episode is important, but do an assessment in terms of where are you at right now? You have to inform yourself. We can't cover our ears, cover our eyes, pretend like we don't know. This is our business. I don't even care if it's a side hustle. 
You got to know the data. And let's not make it mean something it shouldn't. Whether you're behind your goal or not doesn't determine your worth. It doesn't mean you're meant to be an entrepreneur or not. It's just data points so that from there we can make new decisions. That's all I want you to do here. So thank you so much for hanging out. And if you'd be so kind, please invite your entrepreneurial friends to come hang out here too. Grab a link to this podcast, text it, Slack it, email to a friend. I'd be forever grateful. All right, my friend, I cannot wait to see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye for now. 